How you doing? How you doing? Welcome to the Dog Pound. I'm here tonight with Stan Hoffman. How you doing, Stan? I'm doing great, baby. How you doing? I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I see you in the house, man, like everybody else. Right, right. I'm up here <laughs> right. near, my, uh, uh, near my boxing camp, but I'm at my own home. Okay, okay. Well, listen, I know you have a lot of history in the sport of boxing, and I want you to just, like, talk about um, your history in boxing. Can you give me some of your history you have in boxing? Well, my background in boxing, well, first of all, when I was a kid, uh, getting in trouble, yes. uh, the police uh, convinced my parents to let them uh, 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 get me to go to the uh, PAL. In those days, just about every police station in a basement had a, a gym of yes. sort. They called it a gym. Uh -huh. But so... Uh, they, so in order not to go to reform school, as we called it in those days, mm -hmm. that's when I was a pal of Abe Lincoln's. You know, I go that far back. Okay. And uh, so we, uh, we, uh, I started at the gym. Try, they wanted me to learn how to, you know, hit their bags and, 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 and amateur boxing, big gloves and all that. But I, 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 I did it a little bit, but I was, I was, I had no discipline. Okay. So they said, uh, you better go out and, and find something else. So I then met Customato. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Of course, I went to the 14th Street gym, yes. boxing gym, where they started, Bob yes. Jackson. Mm -hmm. And Cus, after putting me in a ring to look at me, he called me down and he said, son, I, I think you better go get a J-O-B. <laughs> so, so. I, uh, I had, uh, I had nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. I, I basically, I had, uh, uh, I had been away, uh, at, uh for 14 months in, uh, at Atlanta State Penitentiary because I was a bad boy. Oh. And, uh, so when I got let out, I, I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> so right. I, I, I got a job in a music business, which I also was in for 38 years. I, okay. I recorded Chuck Berry and Etta James, and, and uh, I worked with Fats Domino and, and uh, Aretha and so forth. Anyway, okay. well, while I was in my office in the music company one day, mm -hmm. secretary uh, uh, buzzed me and said, there's a guy out here who wants to sell you some music, which is what we did. We bought people's music. Okay. I said, send him in. So he came in and he played me a couple of demos. And uh, I told him that he, he better go get another job. Because it, it, he had, it was like bootleg, uh, bootsy, and uh, funkadelic. And, but it would, they were terrible. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, okay, he was going to leave. And then he looked behind me on the wall and he saw boxing pictures of me with kids who were boxers. Mm -hmm. And he said, you like fighters? You like boxing? I said, yes, but, you know, I, I really do. I love it. I wish I could have done it. He said, you know, if you want to take a shot at it, there are two guys on the 1980 U.S. Olympic team, boxing team, and we're not going to Russia for the Olympics. Our president would let us go. Yes. And so he's what was Joe Manley, Joe Lewis Manley from Detroit. Yes. The other Bad the man. other was a, a heavyweight James Broad. Okay. And so okay. he uh he said, You want to meet him? Maybe you can manage them. They need help. Okay. So long story short, uh I said, Okay. So he brought me uh uh it's a long story. He brought okay. me I don't know how much time we have. He brought me uh uh Joe, I, I had I, I sent the ticket to Detroit for yeah. Joe Manley uh, to come meet with me. Okay. And we met in a restaurant in New York on 57th Street in Manhattan. And we were talking, and he was sort of like almost not interested, just being uh, nice, talking to me. You right. know, because I really didn't know the boxing business at all. 
I knew I knew boxing because I was a fan, but I didn't I don't know anything. Anyway, so while we were talking, my wife walked in, and she had to drop off a, a set of keys to my apartment. On the way, she said hello to him. He left, uh, she left, and he said to me, "I'll sign with you." I said, "Just like that?" He said, "That's the most beautiful woman I ever seen." I said, "Joe." We're talking about boxing. I hate to have to do something to you and kill your exactly. fighting career. Exactly. So, so, but that, he said, he always used to tease me. He'd say, I only side with you at the beginning because you had the most beautiful wife. Now, <laughs> my wife is a black lady. Uh, okay. We're together over 40 years. Wow. She's got blue eyes. Yeah. And, and Joe fell in love with those eyes. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. But, she, she later became like, you know, he was he became our kid. So yeah. I signed him. Then I met with James Broad. I moved them both to Atlantic City because it was a hot bit of boxing in those days. Yes. And, and uh, we did well. Out of the first two fighters I signed, Joe Manley became the junior middleweight, a uh, junior welterweight champion of the IB, first one for the IBF when it was started. Now, now let me... I, let let me ask you this real quick while it's on my mind, too. So Joe Manley, did, is he from Detroit? Because I think I know him. Yes. Joe Manley. Yes. He, he's definitely from Detroit. He, he was born and raised in Detroit. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know Joe Manley. Yes, I know him. I want to ask you a question, too, about the fight between Iran Barkley. When Iran Barkley upset um, Tommy Hearns, were you managing him? And how do you yeah. feel about that fight? Yeah. Well, first of all, we got we got the fight because uh, Bob Arum and and Emmanuel yes. did not believe that Iran Barkley was anything more than a, a, a just a general uh, 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 journeyman fighter. Okay, and so they paid us a few bucks, not uh, you know enough, and uh, right. we came up here to my boxing camp, mm -hmm. and uh, for that fight. Uh, this is some people know this, but not many. Okay. Uh, we knew everybody knew that Iran really was a left hander. Although uh, he orthodox, uh -huh. he boxed, uh, 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 you know, as a righty. And yeah. so we decided to try and fool him. Yeah. So we, we used to tie Iran's left hand around his waist. And had made him small with his right hand only. Wow. And it got very, very good. Wow. And then we went into the fight. They weren't prepared for Iran to do anything with his right hand at all. And that's how he put them down. They weren't expecting it. Mm. And, 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 of course, uh, we won the fight. Okay, yeah. we stopped them. Then the second fight, you yeah. know, we had a second one. Yes, we yes. Fought uh, we 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 gave him a rematch, mm -hmm. and we won that fight as well. And I will tell you, history. I have a lot of things that happened to me that are history. Yeah. History will show you that Tommy Hearns, mm -hmm. in a world title fight, yes, was never, never outboxed because we went twelve rounds and won the twelve rounds. Yeah. And Iran, the club fighter, beat the one of the greatest fighters that ever lived twice. Yes, that is let you know styles do make fights. They sure as hell do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, look, what's what's your thoughts on Michael Moore victory over Tommy Morrison? Oh, well, over, 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 no, sorry about that. Over Michael Bent. Over Michael Bent. Michael Bent. Michael Bent. Uh, Michael Bent. Okay. Uh, Michael, well, well let, let me start the meeting. Okay. Michael Bent lost his first fight. Yes. Professional fight. Mm -hmm. He was a five-time heavyweight champion in the Golden Gloves of New York, which he's the only one. Michael Bent? Yeah. Five-time uh, Golden Gloves champion. Okay, impressive. Then when uh, uh, he, we... we Got a call from Bob Arum mm -hmm. uh, to give Tommy Morrison a tune-up fight. Okay. He said, "I'll give you 
I give you fifty thousand dollars, you know, which Michael had not made up to then. Okay. And I had had Michael for about six fights after nobody else would sign him. And we took the fight, and you know what happened? Yeah. He he died. He stopped him. Wow. Michael's Michael Ben's next fight, number one. Uh, we earned well over a million dollars. Wow. And two, it was, uh, I think it was a million four, million eight, I don't know. Yeah. And and two, uh, we knocked Lennox Lewis, who is to this day is a friend of mine. Yeah. We knocked Lennox Lewis. Morrison uh, lost $7 million, I believe it was, by losing to Michael Bennett. Wow, wow. So that right there alone, you have two of the, the greatest upsets in boxing history with Iron Barkley beating Tommy Herms. Yep. And Michael Ben beating oh, sorry. Yep. Wait, I, how about the third? When, okay. when we went to South Africa and knocked out Eddie Lewis. Oh, I, uh, Hassan. Yes. I seen not a bad, not a big surprise, huh? <laughs> No, it, it's a real big surprise. You're right. Wow. How how was how did you feel about that when he did that? I mean, I mean, how was the feel for you and Rockman? How was the feel of that one? Well, if I was if I was a dopey, I I would have gotten a high for a year. Yeah. It was <laughs> okay. such an exciting, wonderful feeling. But I have to tell you, yeah, we honestly went into that fight mm -hmm. believing. Yeah, that we we if we caught him, which we did. Yeah, Rockman could take him out, and yeah. we did. Wow, wow! Uh, how was the experience of being in Africa? It was phenomenal. It yeah. was after apartheid. You know, I was a little afraid, a little bit, for my wife being black <laughs> when we went there. You know, yeah. American yeah. black. You know, but the, but I have to be honest, it was over. And they, the, the people in South Africa treated us like we were superstars. Mm. Wow. Some great experiences yeah. right there. So you said, some yeah, so you said you, you, have, you have actually managed over 38 world champions or 38 Not world champions? Ever. They told me. I can't even remember half of them. But they, <laughs> <laughs> at my age, my memory yeah. only goes back to what I had for breakfast. So... <laughs> Okay. I've, right, right. I've had, third, yes, I've worked with either as a manager or advisor. Yes. 38 world champions. Wow. Can you name a few of them? And who were who your favorite? Who, which one was your favorite? Now, you know I'll get killed by the others if I tell you that. <laughs> but <laughs> I had good guys. I okay. had James Tony, who I consider like a son. Absolutely. Rachman. Uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, Frank Tate. Uh, Orlando Carrizales, who yeah. I think was the best pure fighter I ever had. Uh, yeah. uh, Regilio Tour. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ira Barkley, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and, and the greatest, in my opinion, woman fighter that ever will have lived, wow. Lucille Riker. Riker. There you go. Absolutely. She could punch like a man. <laughs> she would get into well we yeah. used to sometimes out uh freddie roach uh uh i gave the freddie roach uh to uh train him after a while he was he was training with some uh, she was training with someone else but we went out to california and, yeah. and when i watched her spar you know it sounds like i'm making it up but you forget the minute she started moving around and jabbing and throwing hooks and straight rights, you didn't see a woman fighter. You saw one hell of a fighter. Yes, yes. And I love yes. her anyway. I love yeah, all I of this. Yeah, I told you, I trained with her. At, yes. as she was down at Crunk's gym at the time. She was working with Emmanuel Stewart. Yes. Yeah. Didn't she retire? She retired undefeated, didn't she? Uh, uh, she retired undefeated with me, but as a before me, uh, she uh, uh, did uh, some uh, kickboxing, okay. which she won okay. the whole time. I think she was 17 or 18 years old. Uh -huh. third fight. She went to Japan. I think she lost one or two fights in that. Absolutely. But, 
as a professional fighter, we we were undefeated. Okay, okay. So, do you still follow boxing? I mean, especially like the women division, especially since you know you had Lucia Riker. I mean, do you ever, ever watch Clarissa Shields? And are you excited yeah. about what, how yes. far the, the women's division has went? I I think I, I it's 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 a, I hope it's not too late. I I think it's not, but we couldn't get except you know for Lucia and what's the other girl that wouldn't fight her. Uh, Late well, Ali? Who, no, no. They, Ali was a heavyweight. Let's oh. see. It was 135 okay. pounds. Uh, uh, okay, okay. The one in, uh, that lived in Christ, Florida. Christy, Ma- Christy Martin? Christy Martin, right. Okay, she, okay. She I, I, I once talked with Don and said, Don, just uh-huh. name your price. Yeah. He was managing her. Okay. Well, her husband was managing her, but that was promoting her. Excuse me. Okay. I said, All right. name, name any amount and let us fight Christy Martin. He said, do you think I'm crazy? Okay. That's one thing that Don was not. It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know I know you once um made a deal with Don King um, for $20 million to promote a fight. And which one was it? No. Here's the deal. Uh, the, the story with Don King is 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 this one. Okay. He he wanted to sign Rockman after we beat Lennox Lewis. Okay, that's the one. And he was he was chasing me like I I, I, I was afraid to go to sleep at night. I thought he climbed through the window. Yeah. I love Don, by the way. I want you to know a lot okay. of people who really love Don. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. And, uh, so finally, yeah. we had a, uh, after Lewis, he called me and said, I called your fighter, mm-hmm. but he won't come sit with me without you. I said, that's right. So it's supposed to be Don, remember? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, teasing him. And, and anyway, we went to meet him okay. at a hotel on 58th Street and 6th Avenue in Manhattan. Okay, okay. And we he, he, he started... Give, doing his his usual tango or, yeah. or uh, boogie woogie or whatever he was doing, and he kept that. And I said, Don, it was like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I was getting yeah. tired. He yeah. goes, he's he never gets tired. Okay. So he said, I said, here's what I want. Mm-hmm. I want a five million dollar bonus for my fighter. Mm. After. I get the five million dollars. Then we'll talk about what you're going to negotiate with me for, for the fight. Okay. No, I can't do that. I can't. No, you're crazy. So finally, I said to Rachman, "Let's go." So we both stood up from mm-hmm. his couch in his suite, mm-hmm. and we were about at the elevator when here comes Don, bloppily bloop, bloppily bloop, down the hall, right. and he says, "Wait." I'll give you the five million. Okay, okay. That that, that second fight with Lennox was a big, huge money back then. And so I said, okay, let's go back to your room. We went back to his room, and he said, okay, uh, he and I really would make deals on the phone. He kept his word, and I kept my word. You had to negotiate, and and you got into, like, hang-ups on the phone, but but he kept his word all the time with me, always. So oh. we shook hands on the $5 million. So I said, okay, give me the check. He said, well, I'm in New York in a hotel room. I live in the five. What, what are you talking about? I guess send you the check. Tomorrow. Nope. Give me your check. So we had his, his guy, Izzy, who works for Don, mm-hmm. uh, in the other room in the, of the suite. He said, Izzy, bring me my checkbook. His own personal checkbook. Yeah. And he sat down and he wrote me out a check yeah. for four million eight hundred thousand dollars. Not me, he made it to Rahman, of course. Okay, I guess. Four million eight hundred thousand. So I yeah. said, What's this million? I said five million. He said, Izzy, bring me the bag. And out comes Izzy from the bedroom with a plastic bag that had two hundred thousand dollars in it. Oh, okay, okay. That, that was that was what he was willing to pay when we started. Okay, okay. So we got 
five million dollars to sign as a bonus. Now, fighters have made huge money more than that. Yeah. But I don't know any fighter that got gotten a five million dollar bonus for a personal check from yeah. his promoter for five yeah. million. And hey. then we negotiated for the return and we got a lot more than the five million. Wow. So that was a a great score for Rock, great for me, and and uh, and uh, you know those are the kind of things I get excited about. <laughs> Man, listen, for that kind of money you got back then, that was great. <laughs> that was big. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, was, We've yeah, had yeah. some very interesting. Did you did you think that actually Rock Man? Had a had a, a a good chance to beat him in a second fight because it was it was told and said that that Lennox Lewis was not focused. I know he was doing movies and all that. He just thought that Rockman was gonna be a walk by. It was gonna be an easy fight. Did you? Okay. I mean, how did you th- how did you feel in the second fight? All right. Before we get to the second fight, I just want to tell you this. Put this in the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. If you're dealing with a fighter, not all fighters, of course, yeah. not 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 most fighters. But yeah. some fighters, when you deal with them, if, and you're interviewing them after their fight, yeah. and they just won, what does the fighter say? I was on my game. I worked harder than I ever worked. Absolutely. I, I ran. I did this. I did that. Okay. Absolutely. Now let's take go back. Yeah. The same fighter fights <laughs> I know that you're about to get. Yeah. and loses. Yes. And what did we say? I never trained right. Yeah. I never got my thing right. Yeah. My my manager did this. Yep. My, yep. my 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 uh, trainer didn't do that. Yeah, it's not yep. my fault. Yeah. So so you you got to get used to you know what perspective you're coming absolutely. from. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Let's go to the second fight. The second fight, we trained very hard. We trained mm-hmm. up here. In my, in, in, where uh, two miles from where I'm sitting right now, okay. I have my own boxing camp, yeah. and uh, I only use it for my own guys basically, and people like Dimitri, who I loved. Yes, as I, I let him use the fight the camp, and uh, we did what we felt was everything right, mm-hmm. and then uh. I, I have to tell the truth. I can't. I can't embellish this story. Uh, we we get into the fight and Rock gets stopped. Okay. Yeah. I later find out that it was the first day of Ramadan. Uh, okay. And Rock. He's a Muslim. Is a Muslim. Okay. Okay. And was told by someone who I won't mention. Hmm. You can't eat today. You oh. can't drink water today. Wow. And, and Rahman respected this person mm-hmm. and felt, well, one day it won't hurt me. Yeah. Okay. So but into that fight, half a person. Wow. So would it have been different? Who knows? None right. of us know. Yeah. But that's what, that's, we lost the fight. Because yes. he was good, and I say that with all respect, mm-hmm. he was a good Muslim, and 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 he was told God, God will look over you. Okay, okay. But God was a little busy that night. I think he was watching a movie. <laughs> Man, now now one thing you um brought up that that really like caught my attention is you told me that Custom Motto that told you that you know go get a job. I mean, wow, you you actually met the great custom model who trained Mike Tyson and managed Mike Tyson, mentored well, Mike Tyson. Not okay. only yeah. not only did I meet Custom Model, okay. from where I'm sitting right now, yes. I'm in the Catskill Mountains. Oh. Mike was in the town of Catskill. And okay. Cus he lived with Cus there. So yeah. I've known I knew Cus years before I used to bring them guys like uh, 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 James Broad and other guys to spar with Mike. I know mm-hmm. Mike's 15. He, yeah. when we see him, I don't know if he remembers anymore today, but he used to call my wife, aunt Lou and me, uncle Stan. We okay. had a lot of dealings with them. Mm-hmm. And I, 
I always was friendly with him. Okay. And so that that's how that happened. Wow. I stayed around him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what would you, what would be your experience? I mean, you know, from having experience, what would be your advice to, you know, fighters or managers that actually want to manage fighters? Well, I mean, all that experience you got, what would be the best experience you can give a, someone like me, if I want to be a manager, what would, what would be the advice you would give me, especially as far as a fighter? Cause I know fighters can be hard headed and some of them can be very hard to deal with. Well, can I, uh, first, let me give you an example of how I went into managing fighters. Okay. Uh, uh, I went to Don King and, and wanted to make a deal with him on Joe Manley and James Broad. Mm -hmm. he, 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 we didn't do it. I did it, finally did it with uh, Bob Arum. But mm -hmm. the point is, Bob, I sat down at dinner with, with uh, Don King, and during the dinner, he, he said to me, let me give you advice, son. Now, I'm, he's only a few months older than me. Let me <laughs> okay. give you advice, son. Oh, boy. I okay. think he called me. Boy. Okay. <laughs> and I know how someone feels to be called boy. <laughs> so I said, okay, yeah, give me advice. He's, it's in Don King's book, by the way, of Only in America, if you read the book. Okay. What I said. That he said that. And, my, and I said, uh, okay, give me the advice. Yeah. He said to me, not the word I'm going to use, but a harsher word. He mm. said, always remember this. Yes. Screw the fighter before he screws you. Wow. Now, I almost didn't become a manager. Wow. <laughs> I mean, so that was the beginning of my thinking about being a manager. But I loved it. It, wow. was, it was in my blood. I just wanted to be a manager. So, wh what do I tell you? What did I learn? Okay. I always say I'm not sure that I'm I'm not exaggerating or even underestimating. Yeah. But one thing I was told when I wanted to be a manager was by people I talked to who mm -hmm. said, "Go to Gleason's, which was our gym here. Mm -hmm. Go to Gleason's and listen to what people are talking about. Listen to the fighter. Watch him." You know, you know a little bit about boxing. Pay attention and don't open your mouth. Yes. So I always say the first thing you got to do is get around in the gym, mm -hmm. see who you like, who likes you, have a, have a, have a feeling that you like. And it's no shame to start out. Yeah. You'll learn as you go. Yeah, yeah. Who was your favorite fighter today? I know we only got like a couple of minutes left. Who was your favorite fighter today? And who was your favorite fighter of all time? Favorite fighter of all time is easy. Sugar Ray Robinson. Okay. Okay. I when I was a kid, I thought he was I thought he was music on his feet. I mean, he was wonderful. Okay. Uh, today I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have a favorite fighter. Okay. Do you watch boxing? Yes. Okay. My okay. favorite promoter right now is is uh, Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I Great love him, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, definitely, definitely. So, what are you doing nowadays? I know this this coronavirus or this quarantine got us all in the house. I mean, wow, we're stuck in my now. Luckily, we have a big house, yeah. so you know, you can walk around and. And uh, whatever it is, okay. we have enough land to go out, you know, and yeah. sit yeah. in the sun if it ever shows up again. Yeah. yeah. And, and and we just have to stay. We, I have friends, a lot of friends up here in the mountains, but, okay. you know, we talk on the phone. We got to do the yeah. right thing. At my age, and 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 my grandkids, and my and my wife, and who, yeah. you know, whatever, uh, yeah. and my kids, uh, I can't afford to get sick. Yeah, yeah. Is it actually hard to breathe up there, up there in the mountains? I know a lot of fighters, like you manage to just take the fighters. When you start running, a little bit okay. when you start running, but it, you you get over it. Like if you go to Colorado, you know, the first couple of days you're going to be going, uh, you know, but after that, you know, each day gets a little easier. I got you, I got you. So you I still like have a, in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Do you still have a camp? Do you still have people coming to your camp, training your camp? Yeah. I, I'm not, I, I got too old to be able to work the camp. 
So okay. I'm going I'm to put it on the market. Uh, I have the property yeah. and the gym on it and all the houses and all. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, we're going to try and sell it. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, I appreciate you. Stan, it was great talking to you tonight. Thank you for yeah. coming to K9 Boxing. And, man, we're going to get together and talk again. Maybe have lunch. Maybe I can come, you know, um, and view, view your ranch. Huh? I'll huh? be like Don King. How much money you got in your pocket? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, I was promoted by Don King, too. <laughs> okay. uh, you got to so play the game. You know, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad to meet you. It, it, it was fun doing this with you. And yeah. uh, I hope we get to see you at one of Dimitri's fights. Or Absolutely. If you come to New York, call me. Yes, yes. Thank you. I will. You have a great evening, and thank you for the interview. Thank you. It was fun. Okay, thanks. Ciao. Cheers. Okay.